the progress is progressing. I don't know how to explain it, but that shook me. Elegant bananas. <laughs> Welcome to a new series. This is called Penguin Modern Quest Journey Through the Box. That's what I'm gonna call it. Cool, isn't it? And in this series, I want to read every single book from this book set. So I want to bring you along with me so we can see how they are together. Um, I think I'll try to do like five per episode, however long that might take me to film each one because that seems manageable. So the first one that I'm going to read, if I can take it out. Because once in here, they don't want to come out. Okay, okay. Let's put this here. The first book that I'm going to read is called Letters from Birmingham Jail by Martin Luther King Jr. So I'll check in with you once I finish reading this. Let's do it. It's the next day. So yesterday I finished a letter from a Birmingham jail by Martin Luther King Jr. And I realized I haven't read the back, so let me do that quickly. This landmark missive from one of the greatest activists in history calls for direct non-violent resistance in the fight against racism and reflects on the healing power of love. So I really like this. I gave this a four out of five stars. I truly, truly enjoyed it. This is made out of two parts. The first is a letter uh, from Birmingham jail and the second is the three dimensions of a complete life. For the first letter, I really, really loved it. Like it talks about uh, really important issues like racism, segregation, justice and injustice, uh, the idea of morals and what is right. And just because something is legal doesn't make it automatically morally correct. Um, and he, He's so well-spoken. It's just, it's so brilliantly written. This is an open letter, by the way, and there is this quote, this one. Lukewarm acceptance is much more bewildering than outright rejection. And when I read that, I was like, wow, that is so, so true. And I just, I love this letter. It's so well-written, again, so well-spoken. And it's just, it's a very long letter, but, is definitely one worth reading like every single point he makes even though it's been such a long time since there and we don't necessarily have segregation anymore it's all of the ideas are still so relevant today and racism is very much a thing unfortunately so i would fully recommend reading the letter um the second part the three dimensions of complete life uh, Martin Luther King says that in order to have a complete life you have to have three things the length the breadth and the height um, and like have these combined so the length is the your inward concern with yourself uh, here he says that no matter what you decide to be even if it's not at the top no matter what you want to do do it well like if you decide to be a street sweeper or a shoe polisher do it in a way that you are proud of yourself like make sure you actually put effort into it so he says for the first one that after accepting ourselves and our tools we must discover what we are called to do and once we discover it we should set out to do it with all the strength and all the power of what we have in our systems now the second dimension is the breath of life and here he talks about uh, other people he says that the breath of life is the outward concern for the welfare of others uh, you cannot 
just think of yourself you also have to think of the others and that everything in this world is connected and the third dimension the height of life he talks about uh, the upward reach for God and this is kind of where I lost him because I am not a religious person I definitely am not so he says that just because you have the length and the um, breath so like the inward and the outward concern for the like yourself and the world just because you have those it's not enough you also have to have a reach towards god towards a um a bigger being and i completely lost him here i just it wasn't for me again i'm personally not a religious person so this this meant nothing to me uh, which is also like why I gave this a four star, I just didn't necessarily relate to the sermon as much as I related to the letter. Did I mention that the second part is a sermon that was recorded and then uh, written down? So, um, even though I didn't necessarily agree with the second part, I definitely recommend checking this book out. It's so well written, it's so um well spoken and you can definitely t uh, see why he was such an important activist because his words just make you feel things and that's very important so this was the first book and yay one down and four out of five is a great score so i'm happy that the first one was a success so let's see what the second one is i have my book okay so the second one is this one this is Television Was a Baby Crawling Toward That Death Chamber by Allen Ginsberg. And this one says that profane and prophetic verses about sex, death, revolution, and America by the great icon of beat poetry. Ooh, so this is poetry. I'm looking forward to it. Oh my god. Okay, this is what it looks like inside. And I look forward to reading this, so second book here we go once again it is the next day so let's talk about the book i hated this book it was terrible it felt like just an amalgamation of words that had no meaning whatsoever it just it made no sense like and the poems that did they were basically talking about his anus or his genitals that's it. I gave this a one star and it's just, I'm so glad this wasn't the first book that I read because I hated it. It wasn't for me. I just, I didn't understand the purpose of these poems and I could not connect with any of them because they made no sense. Again, just a bunch of words put together and I just, I don't, it wasn't for me. It just, it was just a bunch of words connected together and it's just, they made no sense. So definitely not for me, but book two out of the way. Now let's see what the third is and go from there, I guess. I really hope it's better than this one because this was bad, like so bad. Okay. Ta-da! This is the third book. This is The Breakthrough by Daphne du Maurier. Uh, this is a scientist's attempt to solve the mystery of life after death. Uh, has chilling consequences in this eerie tale from a virtuoso writer of suspense. I'm so glad. I really hope I like this one. Even if it's like a three star, it will be far better than what I just read. But I have hopes for this. So I guess I'll see you tomorrow and tell you all about it or in the evening but I'm usually I finish reading them and then I'm too lazy to film this segment so I just film it the next day but yeah this is the third book let's go another book done now when they said this was eerie they meant it I wasn't sure what to think about this book in the beginning um, because it just it kind of it was a bit slow but as you read it it's just so captivating and also very strange like you don't know what's going to happen it's basically about this scientist who's assigned to a different project and the project is not what it seems like it is and it's just so i don't want to spoil it but i was shook <laughs> by the end of this it was 
not what I expected. I didn't expect anything from it, to be fair, but it wasn't what I expected. It was just, it was so good. I gave this a four out of five because I do think like the beginning could have been more catchy perhaps, or the end could have been slightly more developed, but overall it was such a great story and it's just, it takes you in and it holds you there. Like it's such a good little book and I do recommend because it was, it was good. Like I was shook, like I said, shook. So this was the, the breakthrough by Daphne du Maurier. Definitely recommend another hit. So I'm happy I read this. Also in here, I want to read you a quote that just, oh my God. Okay, so immortality in some form or other becomes a certainty. The whole meaning of life on earth is changed. Yes, I thought, changed forever. The fusion of science and religion in a partnership at first joyous, then the inevitable disenchantment, the scientist realizing and the priest with him that, with eternity assured, the human being on earth is more easily expendable. Dispatch the maimed, the old, the weak, destroy the very world itself. For what is the point of life if the promise of fulfillment lies elsewhere? Boom. That... I don't know how to explain it, but that shook me. So, <laughs> I really, really like this book. Again, I thought something was missing, but I really liked it. Now let's see what the fourth book is. Oh my God, we're doing so good. I'm so proud of myself that I can't even believe that the progress is progressing. So <laughs> let's see what the fourth book is. This is The Custard Heart by Dorothy Parker. So this says, wisecracking and heartbreaking these tales of women on the edge by legendary wit Dorothy Parker show the darkness beneath the surface of the jazz age. So should be more like, yeah, there are three stories here and I look forward to them because the last one was so good. So yeah, I look forward to this. Once again, the book confused me. I don't know what it was about it, but the first and the third story just it didn't make any sense for me. The custard heart and the you were perfectly fine, just I didn't understand them. The second story, the big blonde, was about this woman who tries to find her worth in men. She gets married, but then the relationship doesn't go well. So she becomes kind of a sugar baby and just goes through men and tries to find her self-worth in them. And it just, all of the stories I feel like end in um, a very open ending. You have to decide for yourself what will happen next. But I just, mm, I don't know. Also the first story, The Custard Heart, on the first page it says, arched feet like elegant bananas. Elegant bananas. I think that says more than enough about what it is, because Elegant bananas, who uses that? How are bananas elegant? Like, what? And then there's this one, her eyes darkly mournful, but her exquisite breast pointed high. What? So the first story, definitely not my thing. Um, the third story was only five pages, but even in the five pages, it, it managed to confuse me beyond belief. But the second, I did really like the second. So that is why I gave this book a 2.5 out of five stars. It would have been higher. I just didn't like the first and the third story. So this was The Custard Heart by Dorothy Parker. And now for the fifth book and the last in this video, I think. Um, we have this one. We have three Japanese short stories by Akutagawa and others. And this is Three beguiling, strange, funny, and hair-rising tales of imprisonment, memory, and atrocity from early 20th century Japan. Um, these contains uh, Behind the Prison by Nagai Kafu, Closet LLB by Uno Koji, and General Kim by Akutagawa Junosuke. Um, I don't know why it doesn't say the translators, because usually it does. This one doesn't. Anyway, um, this is the fifth book and once I finish reading it, 
I'll tell you all about it. So let's go. And here we have the last book. This was three Japanese short stories by Akutakawa and others and honestly I found them a little bit dull, especially the first two stories, the Behind the Prison and the Closet LLB. They're just... the main characters seem very bored with life and I guess they were. It's just... it narrated the progression of time and just these men who were mostly observers, I would say, who basically do nothing all day and just... yeah, they don't do anything. They live off... the first one lives off of his parents' money, the second one doesn't even have money to live off from. He just doesn't pay his rent and sleeps in the closet and it's just... I did not like them. Um, the third story I did enjoy, it's basically an over-exaggeration of this um, Korean hero from a myth and I like that in the end the author himself says that myths are typically over-exaggerated and they're there to just uh, raise the national pride, if you will. Or what, what does he exactly say? So he says, to any nation's people, their history is glorious. The legend of General Kim is by no means the only one worth a laugh. So I fully understand that. I, again, completely agree. I think one has to be careful of myths and how they are portrayed. So um, I really enjoyed the last one. It was the shortest, but the first two at some point felt like they dragged, especially the first one. But love the third one so i am really glad that i read this one and because of that i gave this book a 3.25 out of five stars so um not fantastic but i'm definitely happy i read this and there are pages that i highlighted the things from as you can see don't know if you can see um because i did enjoy reading it so yeah this was the fifth book from the collection so in the end these are the five books I read this week and I'm just so proud of myself for reading them and I'm just so fascinated by them because there are so many authors and so many different genres, ones that I would not pick for myself necessarily. So this is a great way to just expand your horizons and if there's something from these books that you enjoy, you can then follow through and just look at the author's other works, if you will. So I think these books just do a great job at introducing you to other literature that you might not pick for yourself. So these are the five books and this is my first video into the Penguin Modern Quest Journey Through the Box and I'm so excited for the next one and just excited to finish this book collection because there are 50 books in here. Also I'm going to have such a difficult time putting these back because once you read them they just kind of gain a bit of volume so they were already a tight fit <laughs> so we'll see how we'll do this but thank you for joining me on this journey and I hope I'll see you next time as well so we can go through them together and if you have read any of these books it, or the ones in the box already please let me know and what you thought about them did you enjoy them and if I should look forward to any of them. So yeah, that was me. Thank you for watching this. Please also check my second channel. I play Sims. And yeah, that was it. I'll see you next time. Bye. I just give the earth my soul Hear my thoughts bounce off the walls